Hello everyone and welcome back to the Kohi Game Engine series. Today we are going to tackle render passes. Really quick though, I would like to take a quick second and thank the partners of the channel, AR Slayer and Wen Shang. The partner is the highest tier of supporter on the channel. And so I just wanted to say thank you to our partners as well as our other supporters that are listed here on the screen. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, there are a couple ways to do that now. First off, I have channel memberships available. You can access that by clicking the join button below this video. I'll also provide a link to a video that I have describing the memberships. And I also have a Patreon page, which is patreon.com forward slash Travis Roman. Thank you all very much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. So before we begin, a quick description of what a render pass is. A render pass basically tells Vulkan about the frame buffer attachments, uh, the images that we created, uh, that we're going to be using while rendering. So our color attachments and our depth attachments for our depth buffer. So it's also going to tell us some other information about uh, how many samples to use for each one of them, formatting information, various rendering options, things like that. So all of this information is going to be sort of packaged in a render pass object. And so a single render pass can also consist of multiple subpasses. And subpasses are basically, you can think of them as sort of uh, subsequent rendering operations that can depend on something done in a previous subpass, for example. Uh, like if you wanted to do some sort of post-processing effect, like cartoon outline effects or bloom, something of that nature, that's kind of what you would use that for. And if you group all of these operations into one render pass using multiple subpasses, then Vulkan is actually able to order the operations internally and optimize things to make it a little bit quicker. So we actually have render passes and then render subpasses that we're going to use for those purposes. Now, at least for now, we're going to start off sort of hard coding some things and taking some liberties just to get something up and running with a lot of to-dos to make things configurable and more flexible down the road. So one of those things we're going to assume right off the bat is that we're only going to have a single render pass with a single sub pass. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and create Vulkan render pass .h, And we'll start that with an include of Vulkan types. And from there, we are going to have our Vulkan render pass create, which we pass a bunch of stuff to. So first we pass the Vulkan context as normal for a lot of these up, uh, functions. And then we're gonna pass something called a Vulkan render pass, which we will go ahead and define here in a minute. And then we're gonna pass an X, Y, W, H. And this is going to be the render area that we are going to use for the render pass. So uh, we can actually define an area of the image to actually render to. We don't have to render to the entire thing. Uh, and so this is what defines that. And then we also specify the clear color, which is just RGBA. Now, I do have these as individual floats at the moment because we do not have a vector for type yet. That will come when we create the math library and then we can refactor this to just take in a render area and a clear color vector four. But since we don't have that yet, I'm doing it this way for now. We also take in a value for the depth and a value for the stencil. And that'll make more sense here in a minute. But before we move on, let's go ahead and get this Vulkan render pass structure defined. So if we go over to Vulkan types INL, between Vulkan image and Vulkan swap chain, we are going to declare two things. So the first thing that we have here is a render pass state. So a render pass, obviously, since it is something that gets executed, is something that we have a state that should be tracked. So we have a ready state, which means that the render pass is ready to begin. We have a recording state, which we'll get into a little bit more once we get into command buffers. And then uh, once we have started the render pass, we will be in render pass. Uh, and then once we have ended that, we'll say recording ended, which means we're not in the render pass anymore. And then we have something called submitted which is basically saying, okay, uh, the, the render pass has been submitted for execution. Again, we'll clarify on that a little bit later. And then uh, we have a sort of default, which is not allocated. And this not allocated is used when we first stand up the render pass. 
Below that, we have our render pass structure itself. So we have a handle that we store. We store the area as well as the clear color. And then we have our depth and stencil values that get copied over and then our state. So it's pretty straightforward stuff, but there it is. Okay, so that takes care of our create. Obviously, since we have a create, we also need a destroy. So it just takes the context and the render pass to be destroyed. And then, as I mentioned before, since render passes contain commands to be executed, they are sort of, they have a begin and an end, right? So you begin a render pass and you end a render pass, and you may have subsequent ones after that. And so, as a result, we have a Vulkan render pass begin, which takes something called a command buffer, which we have not yet created. And then we have a Vulkan render pass render pass, and then a VK frame buffer, frame buffer. So this VK frame buffer is not something we've talked about yet. And this Vulkan command buffer is something we've not talked about yet. And unfortunately, at this point, there are a lot of overlapping things that you sort of have to cover at once. So we're going to do our best to cover all those things. But for now, let's go ahead and we're just going to create the structure for a command buffer, even though we aren't actually going to fill anything out. So let's go back to Vulkan types inl. And this time below swap chain, we're going to paste two things. So we are going to have a Vulkan command buffer state, which has states very similar to what we had in our render pass, but not exactly the same. We will explain these things once we get to command buffers, but we need those for now. And then we have a command buffer structure, which takes a handle and also holds a state. Okay, and that's it. That's all that does, right? It's just a container for these two things. Okay, so if we go back now to render pass begin, we'll see that we're okay. All right, so since we have a begin, obviously that means we have an end, which just takes in a command buffer again and a render pass. So as you will see, uh, command buffers and render passes are actually pretty tightly coupled. So. I promise all those things will make sense once we've gotten through all the explanation, but for now, just take at face value that a command buffer is something that will hold a list of commands to be executed by a queue, and a render pass needs one of those to perform its operations, okay? And this is the entire interface for render passes, right? There's not a whole lot to it, at least from an interface perspective. So next, we're going to create a new file. We're gonna call it vulcanrenderpass.c. And this is where we're gonna put our implementation for those things. So the only includes we need here are Vulkan render pass, and then we need our core K memory because we're gonna be performing some memory operations that we need this for. Okay, so our Vulkan render pass create. Ultimately, the function that we're going to be calling is VK create render pass. And if we look at this, it requires a device a p create info, so this Vulkan uh, render pass create info that we're going to have to fill out, uh, an allocator, and a render pass uh, object. Okay, and so uh, this render pass object is obviously the one that uh, is sort of the out render pass, the one that we actually create the handle. Okay, so that is the ultimate goal. So the very first thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and start filling out our render pass create info. Okay, now. Uh, if we look at this struct, there are all kinds of things that we are going to need, right? So we are going to need uh, the VK structure type, which we already have, uh, a P next, which we're actually not going to use, so we can just null that out. Uh, the render pass create flags, we have to fill that in. Uh, the attachment counts. So this is actually going to be um, our attachments that we created earlier, our color attachment, our depth attachment. Uh, and then, of course, the attachment description, which is an array of those attachments. And then uh, we have a subpass count and a subpass description array. Um, so we'll have to create those and pass those in. And then something called subpass dependencies, which we'll get to in a minute. So uh, I'm going to sort of tackle this from a top down sort of perspective and step through these things that way. So the first thing that I want to go ahead and handle here is. I want to go ahead and create the main subpass, right? For now, that is simply going to be creating the subpass and setting its pipeline bind point to graphics, right? Which basically says, uh, how is this going to be used? We're going to bind it to the, to the uh, graphics pipeline. 
And now the next thing that uh, we are going to do is we are going to describe our attachments, right? So as I mentioned before, we have two attachments. Now this is where I'm taking one of those liberties and sort of hard coding some stuff just to get things stood up. We will make this configurable later on. For now, we have two attachments, right? So we go ahead and save off our attachment count and create an array of that size, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna wanna fill out is our color attachment. That's gonna be our first attachment, okay? So we have a VK attachment description that we fill out called color attachment. And for now, we're going to be using the swap chain image format. Uh, and again, this is hard coded. This is not something we're always gonna to wanna to do. So we're eventually gonna to wanna to make this configurable, but for now, this is what we're gonna stick with. We're gonna have uh, one sample. And then uh, we have something called load and store operations, which basically indicates what operations occur when we are actually loading this, right? We could load the contents of something. We could say, just clear it. We could say that we don't care. And so there are a lot of various options available. In fact, let me go ahead and just pull up this, our handy dandy spec here. So under the VK attachment load up, we have a couple of things here. We have load, we have clear, and we have don't care. These pretty much act like what you would expect. So load basically specifies the contents of the previous image within the render area will be preserved. So if you wanted to combine with the last thing that was rendered in a previous pass, that's what you would use. Uh, clear specifies that we, we don't want to keep any of that stuff and we want to clear it to a uniform value, AKA the clear color that we're specifying in this RGBA. And then we also have uh, don't care, which specifies that the contents within the area don't need to be preserved uh, for any future use. So um, it basically means that the, uh, the space will be undefined, okay? Um, and so in our case, we are actually going to say we want to clear it, okay? And then we also have store ops, right? So I'm actually just going to, again, search for that. And these are sort of the other side of that equation where we have store or don't care right store basically says we're going to use this for something else going down the road don't care says it's going to be undefined meaning nothing else needs to read uh, from it going forward okay and then uh, we have the same properties available for the stencil load and store operations in this case it's don't care for both of them because we're not using a stencil buffer and then uh, Initial layout is going to be undefined because uh, we basically don't expect any particular layout before the render pass starts because we're not actually loading uh, a image from a previous uh, render pass, right? So in this case, we don't we don't uh, we don't care, so it's undefined. And then the final layout is just telling it that it's going to be used as a present source, um, and this is what it's going to be. The, the image is gonna be transitioned to after the render pass. And image transitions are something we still haven't really covered, um, but understand that it's it's a, uh, a layout uh, format and memory basically is, is what this is referring to. In this case, we aren't gonna use any flags and we are gonna populate the first attachment descriptions array uh, element with color attachment, okay? So that is our color attachment. We also need something called an attachment reference, which basically specifies to the subpass what attachment we're going to be using for the color attachment, right? So we're saying here, uh, the reference layout is VK image layout color attachment optimal, which again is that memory layout uh, that allows sort of the GPU driver to determine what layout is best. But it's basically saying we're gonna use uh, this for a color attachment and the index of this array that we want to use is index zero, okay? So that's what the attachment reference is. Here is where we actually connect the two. So uh, our subpass color attachment count is just one because we have one color attachment. And then the array of color attachment is going to be the address of the color attachment reference. So you see we actually use the reference as opposed to the actual description itself. Okay, so the depth attachment, and again, this, uh, if there is one, we're sort of taking the liberty here and saying that there is. Uh, again, this is something that we'd probably want to have configurable. Uh, but basically, uh, the only differences here is that we are using the depth format from the device. And then um, all of these are basically the same, except for this last one here, which basically indicates its 
final layout, which is depth stencil attachment optimal. Okay. Here is where we assign uh, to that array, uh, the, the second index of that array to say, hey, it's the depth attachment. And then uh, here's the reference for the depth attachment. And then uh, after this, there actually are other attachment types. So I'm gonna put, to, put a to-do in here uh, to make this configurable eventually down the road. We have input, resolve, and preserve attachment types. Um, you guys can feel free to look those up if you wanna sort of jump the gun, but for now, I'm just gonna put to-do in there and we'll gloss over that and come back to it when it actually makes sense to do so. So here, we're gonna go ahead and tell the subpass about the depth stencil attachment by using the address of the attachment reference. Okay, and here are the other attachment types. So we have input, which is input from a shader. So uh, these will be zeroed out by this. I am aware of that, but I'm being explicit in putting these here so that later when we go to fill them out, uh, we just sort of, sort of already have all this laid out and can fill it out easily. So uh, we have input from a shader, which is basically your input attachment. So we have resolve attachments, uh, which is used for multi-sampling color attachments. And then we have attachments that are not used in this subpass, but are preserved for the next subpass, which are preserve attachments, okay? All right, so now we have something called render pass dependencies. So I'm just going to paste this in and sort of explain it. So what this describes is basically what our source subpass is. So if we had more than one subpass, uh, we would actually indicate what that is here. But since this is the first and only subpass, we're just going to say subpass ex external, okay? Uh, destination subpass, there isn't one because we're not using it. Um, here is the source stage mask. So we're just saying we're using the color attachment output bit for that and the destination. And then the destination access mask, this is basically uh, what, what memory access we want um, from the, operation, the results of this operation. So we're saying we wanna be able to read and write to it, okay? And then we don't have any dependency flags, okay? And when we go to add those things, I'll explain it a little bit further what that is, but for now, we don't have any. Okay, so now we can finally fill out our render pass create info. So here we have our attachment count and our attachments, which is our array, our subpass count and our subpass, which is just one right now, so we just pass the address of that. We have our dependency count, which is one with our um, an array of dependencies, which is just one again, so we pass the address of that. And then we're not uh, using pnext or flags for now. So I've zeroed those things out. Again, I am aware that that's done here. I'm just trying to be explicit. Okay. So finally, we call VK create render pass, and that creates our render pass for us. Takes in the logical device, the create info, the allocator, and uh, writes to the handle. Okay, and that is it for the render pass create. Not a whole lot to it. Uh, it's more just filling out structs than anything, but um, that is basically it. Okay, so render pass destroy is actually really simple. So it takes in a context and a render pass and then uh, makes sure that we actually have render pass and a render pass handle. And if we do, we call VK destroy render pass, passing the logical device, the handle, uh, and of course the allocator, and then we zero out the handle. Okay, that's it. That's all there is for destroy. Render pass begin. So this one is not too complicated, thankfully. Um, this is just what we use to begin a render pass. So in order to do this, we are going to be filling out a, as you might've guessed, a VK render pass begin info structure. So this is actually going to take in several pieces of data. So first off, we take the handle to the render pass. And then we take in something called a frame buffer, which again, we will come back to what frame buffers are at a later time, but just know that we need to assign it for now. And then we have the uh, begin info render area offset X, Y width and height. So this is again, our rendering area that we're going to, or the space within the image that we're going to render to, okay? And then we have something called clear values. And clear values is, for those of you who are familiar with OpenGL, um, where you have to call 
a clear passing in different bits like the color buffer and the depth buffer and things like that. Uh, that is actually what this represents. So this clear values in this case is gonna have two because we have one for color and one for depth. So here we're just going to zero out uh, the memory of that just to make sure that uh, all these structures are cleared. So for the first clear value, we are going to copy into the float32 array, which is just an array of four. We are going to copy in the RGBA that we passed in. So this is the, the values that will be used to clear the color buffer, okay? And then we are going to also set the first index, which is the depth stencil and we're gonna set depth equal to the render passes depth and the stencil equal to the render passes stencil value, okay? And then of course, in our begin info, we have a clear value count, which is two. And we have our clear values themselves, which is just the array that we just set up here, okay? And then here, we issue our first command, okay? And this is VK command begin render pass, okay? This is a command, uh, which is something I'm going to get into when I talk about command buffers. So just take this uh, with a grain of salt for now, saying that this is going to be issued, a command issued to our command buffer that's passed in, okay? Uh, again, we'll come back to this, but this is one of those sort of weird overlap areas that I was talking about that will make sense once I cover command buffers, okay? But uh, this is a command that we are issuing to say, hey, begin the render pass. And then we'll actually set the command buffer state to say command buffer state and render pass, okay? And that is all there is to starting a render pass, right? So we basically set this up and then issue a single command. And render pass end, as you might guess, is actually pretty simple. We issue another command to end, end the render pass. Uh, we pass it the command buffer, and then we set the command buffer state to command buffer state recording, okay? And this is actually all there is for the render pass. So the only other thing that we have to do is in the render back end, we have to hook things up. So under our include for swap chain, we are going to include Vulkan render pass.h. And after swap chain create, we are going to call Vulkan render pass create, right? And here we are going to pass uh, the context, the context main render pass, which we actually haven't created yet. So I'll go back and fix that in a second. Here we have the area of the image that we're gonna be rendering to. So we're gonna start in zero, zero, which is the corner of the image. And we're gonna render the, the full width and the full height. Here's the clear color, which is 0, 0, 0 0.2, 1.0 F. So this is RGBA. So this is basically gonna be a dark blue. And then for the depth, uh, we are gonna have a depth of 1.0, that's our depth range. And then uh, the stencil, since we're not bothering with it, is just gonna be zero. Okay, so uh, we have our Vulkan render pass create. And then as you might guess in our destroy, we actually need to go ahead and destroy that as well. So we'll go ahead and call Vulkan render pass destroy, again, passing this main render pass, which we have not yet created. So let's actually go ahead and go to our context and right below the swap chain, I'm going to put the Vulkan render pass and we're gonna call it main render pass because this is the main render pass that we're gonna use for the system, okay? So let's actually go ahead and build this. Okay, everything built successfully, let's go ahead and run. And we see that we have uh, no errors here. If we look in the debug console, we have no errors here. We're all good to go. So if uh, I go back actually to our window here and hit close, we also do not get any errors closing down. So uh, we have uh, this set up correctly. Um, we are not actually beginning or using our render pass just yet. We're actually gonna hook all that, that stuff up at once, but Anyway, for right now, uh, that is gonna do it for the creation of our render pass. So in the next video, we are actually gonna be tackling command buffers, which will make uh, all that command buffer stuff make sense. And then uh, soon after that, uh, we are going to make our synchronization objects. So the fences and semaphores that we've mentioned a few times, we're gonna go ahead and create those. And we're gonna create some uh, frame buffers, which is gonna be really quick. 
and then we'll tie it all together and we'll be clearing to the screen. So it is coming very soon. And with that, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please toss it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and click the little bell notification there to get notifications as to when the next video in this series drops. And thanks, I'll see you guys next time.